Petroglyphs in Valcamonica Valley We can see a lot by visiting Valcamonica, the place par excellence in Italy to admire the cave paintings. In fact, we can immediately say that more than paintings, it is instead of engravings or technically, we speak of petroglyphs, or even simply, graffiti. The landscapes in the surroundings are unmissable, natural and archaeological parks and reserves. We find ourselves in a valley immersed in the charm of time before time, inhabited and cared for by an archaic, simple prehistoric people, who, however, have left us tangible signs of art and beauty. Of the signs precisely that UNESCO in 1979 recognized as a World Heritage Site, all to live, know, preserve, protect, and admire. The ancient engravings of the valley. Obviously, we are in Val Camonica, in Lombardy, a region of northern Italy, in the easternmost area in the provinces of the city of Brescia. The area more precisely corresponds to about 24 municipalities which have the task of guarding an enormous wealth that has crossed the millennia up to us. The first traces of civilization visible in this area date back to the Copper Age, over 13,000 years ago, when after a great glaciation, the valley immersed in the Alps was permanently inhabited by a population of uncertain origin, the Communi. These people have left more than 30,000 rock engravings, especially in the period around 8,000 years ago, when they entered the so-called Iron Age in men, had learned to forge metals to use them both for hunting and for building tools more resistant over time. These traces give us remarkable indications about life at the origins of humanity and represent one of the most concrete testimonies of prehistory in Italy. Valcamonica, the map of the sites of the prehistory. The Camonica Valley is a complex set of wonders. In those territories, there are eight parks of prehistoric archaeology equipped for visits and a system of 10 archaeological and ethnographic museums scattered in as many municipalities. To this beauty is united that one of various medieval suburbs like Bino, Lover, Pescarzo, of wonderful castles, like that one of Brino, sanctuaries, churches, and till thermal localities like Borio or Angelo Term. In all these places, it is immediately visible the great cultural heritage that from prehistory becomes our contemporary. In order to visit them, all that is necessary to go up again toward north taking as referenced the Lake of Isio. Doing so, we meet first the park of super municipal interest of Lago Moro, Luin e Monticolo, in the municipality of Borio Term, where there are two sites of great interest, Parco de Luin and Parco de Corni Frescae. Proceeding northwards, we meet the archaeological park of Asinino and Voya in the municipality of Asimo where it is possible to walk inside a luxuriant nature and among the chestnut trees looking for prehistoric engravings and graffiti. In the park, there are also small stems of white stone on which are visible the ancient signs. Also at the natural reserve rock engravings of Cito, Simbergo and Pasparto, it is possible to make incredible walks, enjoying the immense green of Valcamonica. The paths here are marked in detail. The didactic communication is well present and is able to tell by merging together rock art, ethnography, and human archaeology. The National Park of Rock Engravings of Nakwame was one of the first sites to be discovered and the first of these to be inscribed in the UNESCO heritage. In this location are the oldest engravings dating back over 13,000 years ago. A magical place, absolutely to know. A smaller park, but not less interesting, is the National Archaeological Park of the Masi di Semo, where the traces of the Kamanika civilization are present close to the mountains. Not far from this, there is the archaeological park of Siradina Betalina, where you can enjoy exceptional mountain views, venturing between these ancient ways. The quality of the signs here is incredible, and the first images of the domestication of the horse are also visible. The path of the municipal archaeological mining park of Celero has rock engravings that are among the most recent compared to those found in the nearby archaeological areas. A walk a little more challenging than the others is the multipath of the Corin del Fate. The path is wilder and has less signage than the others, but the area arouses the same great interest 
and the same immense emotions. Epipaleolithic The earliest rock carvings date back to Epipaleolithic, or Mesolithic, Proto-Communion, 8th-6th millennium BC, several millennia after the retreat of the glacier that covered the Val Camonica, worm glaciation. Those carvings were the work of passing nomadic hunters, following the migrations of their prey. The figures represented in fact depict large animals such as deer and elk, which are the typical prey of that period. The drawings also describe animals wounded with spears. This kind of rock art can be typical for hunters-gatherers and associated with blades and microlites industry. Similar representations are present in the stone carvings of Loon Municipal Park. Neolithic During the Neolithic period, the 5th to 1st centuries of the 4th millennium BC, approximately 5500 to 3300 B. Agricultural practices spread in Val Camonica, correlated with the formation of the first sedentary settlements. In the field of rock art, human figures and sets of geometric elements, such as rectangles, circles and dots, constitute the main elements of the compositions and complete the symbolic meaning of the anthropomorphical petroglyphs. Similar carvings are present in the regional reserve of rock engravings of Cedo, Simbergo and Paspardo. The pertaining to the Neolithic of the schematic anthropomorphic figures, so-called Oranti, praying figures, is questioned, as some scholars refer them to the Bronze Age. According to this interpretation, the only set of figures pertaining to the Neolithic, or to a Neolithic first Copper Age phase, 4th mill, BC, is constituted by the geometric patterns, which are interpreted as topographic representation of a cultivated and plowed land. During this period, domesticated animals are encountered such as dogs, goats, and bulls. Till the end of the Communion II period, objects of worshipping became wider. Particularly the dog, the first domesticated animal started to be worshipped. Discovery and Evaluation The first documented report of the engraved stones dates back to 1909, when Walter Lung pointed out to the National Committee for the Protection of Monuments two boulders decorated around Semo. Capo de Pont. Only in the 1920s, however, did the rocks pique the interest of scholars, including Giuseppe Bonafini, geologist Cenofont Squinabol, and since 1929, Torini's anthropologist Giovanni Moro and Florentine archaeologist Paolo Graziosi. Soon numerous engravings were also discovered on the surrounding rocks, and research was conducted not only by Moro, but also by Raffaele Battaglia for the superintendent to the antiquities of Padua. In the 1930s, the reputation of the cuts was more commonly known in Italy and abroad, so that between 1935 and 1937, an extensive campaign of studies was conducted by Germans Franz Alfheim and Erika Trotman. Alfheim started reading Nazi ideologies into the engravings, which were soon imitated in a fascist work by Moro identifying them as evidence of a supposed ancestral Aryan race. The mapping and cataloging resumed after the Second World War, led by Lang, and conducted by scholars of the Infant Museum of Natural Sciences of Brescia, consisting of both national and international experts. In 1955, with the institution of the Parco Nazionale dell'Incigeni, Rupestrian di Naquain, by the Archaeological Superintendent of Lombardy, Work began to preserve the rocks and their inscriptions. The explorations of Emanuel Inadi began in 1956 and discovered new petroglyphs. The systematic nature of these studies enabled him to publish, in 1960, the first volume of a general summary of La Civilization du Val Camonica. In 1964, Inadi founded the Centro Comuno di Studi Preistorici, Communion Center of Prehistoric Studies. The first, Valcomonica Symposium was held in 1968, the first in a long series of conferences, convening in Valcomonica many scholars of art and prehistoric life. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel before you go.